number one, Hebrews 11, verse number one. The Bible said, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your love. We thank you for your kindness. We recognize that the Spirit of the Lord here is here in a special way. And I pray, God, that you would give me clarity of thought tonight, clarity of speech, and help me to say exactly what the Holy Ghost would have me to say. Nothing more, nothing less. In Christ's name we pray. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. I, want to, I want to preach from these scriptures here. I want to try, with the Lord's help, to preach out of verse 1. The Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. How many here has hopes tonight? Hopes of somebody in your home being saved. I have a real mother who I have no contact with, who I haven't had contact with in over 30 years. I'm 44. Uh, There's zero contact, no Christmas, no Thanksgiving, and nothing. But I've got a hope. Of one day, she's an alcoholic, I heard, and uh, that one day she'll get saved. On, yeah. The scripture here says faith is the substance. The word substance means material. Faith is the material that will make my hope in my heart become a reality. Amen. 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 I, I've got a sister who, who I haven't seen for 18 years. I've got a pretty bad family, to be honest with you. They're sinners. Anybody got family like that? And uh, who, when, oh, 18 years ago, she left three of her small children, two small babies and a, about a five-year-old boy and thought she wanted a different life. And and uh, we didn't know what happened. We didn't know somebody kidnapped her or she goes killed or murdered. We didn't know that until about 16 years went by. In a couple of years, she uh, comes back on the scene through the grapevine and we find out that... Uh, uh, you know, she just wanted a different life. But I've got a hope that one day, she's about two years older than I am, she's 46, but I have a hope. You have prayer requests and I raise my hand. My prayer, unspoken prayer request is my real mother and that sister right there. Now the Bible here says faith is the substance. It is the material of things hoped for. I don't know if you like myself, and here's what I want to try to endeavor to preach on tonight. I don't know if you've ever thought of this or, or even considered it, but somehow in my mind and in my heart, there has been times that I've asked the Lord in prayer, God, how much faith do you need from me to bring my hopes and my prayers into reality. Does anybody else ever ask God, God, how much faith do you need for this prayer to be answered right here? And so I want to, with the Lord's help, preach tonight on what measure of faith does God move in? Specifically, to, to, to very, be very brief in this story here, several years ago, probably... Oh, 1997, 98 summers, probably in that area, my wife became very sick. We had been married uh, 10 years. Amen. We just celebrated 25 last year, so it's been probably 95, somewhere in that area. She became very sick, and uh, I was pastor in a church in Hazard, Kentucky, and and uh, she started having seizures and grandma seizures and it just devastated us because I had never been sick. She had never been sick. And it didn't run in her family. It just devastated. I took a very troubled church with about uh, 15 people. And, and it, I mean, just a lot of stress and, and prayerful. And so through the process of, of a three and a half year period of her being very severely sick and to a place where she would have grandma seizures every uh, five to six weeks, 
She'd have two or three a particular night. She'd go almost like clockwork five or six more weeks. And through the night, she'd have two or three more. And then we'd go on for six weeks. After about three, uh, two and a half years of that, they switched from grandma seizures to uh, uh, very minor seizures where they'd only be about a minute. She'd be in church and holding my son, which was a baby then. And uh, some of the ladies knew the symptoms and signals. And when they seen her go into a seizure, she'd stand in church and she'd just go into a seizure. They'd take Ike away from her, Isaac, my son. And uh, But through that, uh, I really got to praying about faith. I, I wanted God to work a miracle for my wife. Amen. I was under such a load, under such stress that... My entire body broke out in sores. I've never experienced that before or since. So what I'm trying to say is this little message was bred from that time period in my life. Amen. And so as I was praying about this service, amen, and and all that, and and I was really asking God for His Word for this service, I felt like the Lord just nudged my heart to preach on what measure of faith does God move in. Amen. Now, the Bible here tells us, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Amen. And, and Brother Simpson, I didn't, I didn't think there was much about faith. Well, the Bible says in Romans chapter 12 and verse 3 that God had dealt to every man a measure of faith. Amen. Do you know that the Bible talks about in James chapter 2, I read it this morning, amen, in my office before I left home, amen, the Bible talks about a live faith and a dead faith. The Bible said faith without works is dead. Amen. The Bible said in James chapter 2 and verse 22, it talks about a perfect faith. And Galatians chapter 3 verse 23 through down about three or four verses below that it talks about before faith came, we were under the law. Amen. About three verses below that it says, but after faith has come, we are no longer under that school master. So there's a before faith and a after faith. Galatians chapter 6, the Bible says, Faith worketh by what? Love. Amen. The Bible said in Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse 8, that it's through faith by grace are ye saved. How many saved here tonight? Amen. Do you know, for just, just your raising your hand is a sign, amen, that there is faith. Faith in your heart. You cannot get saved without faith. Amen. Huh? Amen. It is impossible to get saved without faith. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible said in Hebrews 11 and 6, it's impossible to, to please God. Amen. Without faith. Huh? Amen. When you, when you think of faith and the source that faith comes from, the Bible said in Romans chapter 10 and 17, so then faith cometh by hearing the word of God. Amen. Oh, I want to preach on what measure of faith does God move in. During my wife's sickness, I would pray often. Amen. Every time, every single time, especially when she had grandma seizures, not the minor. Amen. She only had them when she was asleep. Amen. And uh, uh, every time she'd only be lying there, I'd take this Bible that I'm preaching from tonight, I would open it to Isaiah 53 and verse 5, and I would read, but he was wounded for our transgressions. Uh, she'd make a loud noise, and my all three children would come in there, and we'd pray with her. It'd last about an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes, just until it come out. This went on for about two 
two and a half years, amen, I was asking God. I was sincerely asking God. Amen. There was one time in a revival, and I'm not saying this in, 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 in boastful in me, but as I was searching for God and trying to, amen, pray for a healing for my wife, amen, we were in revival, and every day I went to the church, and I read the New Testament, all laying prostrate on the altar of my little church there in Hazard, Kentucky, and I read the New Testament from Matthew to Revelation that week in about five days, just laying prostrate. I thought faith coming by hearing, even if the hearing by the Word of God. So I read everything. I read the red and prayed for the power as one preacher taught. I want to preach to you tonight on what measure of faith does God need to move in? The charismatics will tell you to have faith in your faith. I've heard that. But faith in your faith is foolishness. The Bible tells us to have faith in Help me preach. The Bible tells us the object of our faith is God. The reason the Bible said in Romans chapter 4 that Abraham staggered not, amen, as was because he knew God was able. It's already been said in this service. He staggered not because he knew what God said. God was able, amen, to perform it. Can I tell you God's ability is the foundation of faith stability? Hallelujah. Amen. Let me move on quickly. Amen. In Galatians chapter 3, it talks about faith. It says that I become a child of God by faith. That means a child of God here tonight. The Bible said in Acts chapter 15 and verse 9, Amen, it tells me that it's by faith that He purifies my heart. Amen. Romans chapter 3 and verse 28 tells me that I'm justified by what? Faith. Amen. Just as if I have never sinned, that happens by faith. Amen. Acts 26, 18 says, I'm sanctified by faith. Amen. We serve a God who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Ephesians 3, Amen. 17 says that He dwells in my heart by faith. But I want to preach to you tonight on what measure does God need? What measure does God need? My wife, when she switched from grandma seizures, anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody got family that have seizures? I see a hand. You know exactly where I'm at. You that raised the hand. It devastates your family. I never would have thought of that unless I had experienced this for myself. And when she switched from grandma seizures to the minor seizures, amen, it, it affected her memory. And uh, I couldn't let her drive. I, I, it was so bad, she, she started having uh, uh, two a day, and five a day, and ten a day, and uh, fifteen a day, and twenty a day. It got there toward the end, amen, where she was having twenty-seven, right at twenty-five, twenty-seven seizures a day. She forgot how to cook. She said, how do you fix fried chicken? How do you fix gravy? I couldn't, we didn't let her take the mail. She couldn't get the mail from the mailbox because she put it in a drawer or somewhere and she'd forget where she uh, uh, put it at. I'm sorry. Amen. And she, she, she would forget, amen, where she would put the uh, the mail. So, I mean, it just devastated us. And Amen. But you know what? Amen. I watched my wife and my wife has always been a, a very strong praying lady and, and Bible reader, but I, I watched her reach for heaven too through that time in our lives, Brother Joy, and, and I watched as my wife for three and a half years, she began to read the Bible on her knees every day and every night, and for three and a half years, she read the complete Bible through five times as me and her searched for God, and we try to find that measure of faith, amen, for God to move. I was serious, uh, amen, one God, it affected our marriage. Not not in a bad sense, but you see what I this when sickness comes in. Amen. And so I was searching, and so I began to look for faith. And amen, this is 
not come off of a computer. It didn't come out of a book. This is handwritten. What the Lord gave me at that time. And I felt like the Lord spoke to me. Amen. I know the crowd, they said it might be a little, little. I don't, it doesn't matter to me as far as size is concerned because I feel like God wants to speak to somebody's heart. You've been praying. You've been seeking the face of God. It might not be a sickness. It might need direction in your ministry. It might need direction in your life. Amen. But you've been praying and you've been asking God. Amen. Just as we were. I looked at faith. The Bible said in Galatians 2.10, excuse me, 2.20, live by, that saints are to live by faith. Amen. Romans 11, 20, the Bible says saints are to stand by faith. Romans 4 and 12, it says we are to walk by faith. Hebrews 11 says we're to obtain a good report by faith. First John chapter 5, the Bible tells us we're to overcome the world by faith. First Peter chapter 5 said we're to resist the devil by faith. Ephesians 6 tells us we're to overcome the devil by faith. Psalms 27 says we're supported by faith. Hebrews 11, 13 says saints are to die in the faith. Help me, Holy Ghost. Amen. 1 Timothy 1, 5 says saints are to be sincere in the faith. Amen. 2 Corinthians 8 and 7 said we're to abound in the faith. Amen. Acts 14, 27 said we're to continue in the faith faith. At Romans chapter 4 it says be strong in the faith. First Corinthians 7, 16 says we're to be steadfast in the faith. Colossians chapter 1 says we're to be grounded and settled in the faith. Amen. Then all of a sudden at First Timothy it says hold faith in a good conscience. But here's what I want to preach to you tonight. Then what measure of faith does God move in? I never will forget I was at my desk there in my little office by my home and I was praying I said God I've never been through anything like this. I'm just a young man. I'm in my early thirties here, Lord. I, and I, I, and I'm serious. And boy, when you're trying to ask God for a divine healing, you ain't got time to gossip. Huh? You ain't got time to, to backbite or to slander. Amen. You don't, you don't have time to hold a grudge. You ain't worried about holding an unforgiving spirit. I mean, when you're trying to touch the throne of God, you know, I remember, thank you, Holy Ghost. I, I remember now you might. Uh, uh, get hurt at me right here, but can I be a little transparent? But I, I remember going through that time in my young life, and Amen. I, I remember some stages I went through as a as a pastor and a preacher, and I remember there would be times, Brother Joey Dean, that that I that I would just get really spiritual, and I just I just just rebuke the devil and every demon out of hell and tell the devil you ain't got no right upon my wife's body and boy I just I would plead the blood of Jesus I would quote Isaiah 53 and 5 I'd quote every healing scripture I could think of amen I would do that for about three weeks and nothing would happen amen and then I'd, I'd go to a different stage I, I'd start saying oh God and I'd ask for mercy please Lord I'm a nobody I'm a nothing God would you just have mercy. And I'd go through that stage for about three weeks and nothing had happened. And then I would switch to forgiveness. And I'd say, God, forgive me if there's anything in my heart. If there's something in my heart. I don't know if anybody's ever experienced anything like that or not. Amen. But I just went through that. Then I'd go back to that real spiritual part. Amen. I was trying to find God. Amen. I was trying to touch God for my wife. I was trying to ask God. And so I, I said, God, what major? If faith is the substance, it's the material. One writer said, faith is the commerce of heaven. And God, how much commerce do you need from me? What's it going to cost to touch the throne of God? You to heal my wife. Heal me, Father. So I, I searched in the Bible. And, and uh, I'm very honest with this. I know most of you all don't know me and... 
Amen. Just took a chance on inviting me, but I, I do appreciate. I hope I can help, brother, brother Jim. That is my intention to help. Amen. And uh, but I, I remember I said, God, uh, is there anybody in the Bible? What measure of faith? I said, is there anybody in the Bible? Does the Bible record? Amen. Anybody having just a heart full of faith? I mean, just full, maxed out. Amen. Of faith. Amen. And you know what? I went through the Bible and I found somebody like that. I found specifically that the Bible records in the book of Acts chapter 6 about a deacon. Huh? Y'all read that scripture, haven't you? And the Bible said they chose one named Stephen who was a man full of... He was what? Full of faith. Full is a type of measurement. It's a type of degree. Stephen was a man full of faith. So I got to read in Brother Tony Walker. I said, Lord, what did you do for this man? Amen. Here's a man full of faith. I said, God, what did you do? I read down through there where the Bible again says he was a man full of faith. And then all of a sudden after, amen, he was chosen, the Bible said he, amen, would, he began to do great signs and wonders among the people. And so much that the Sanhedrin had him arrested. You remember that in Acts 6 and chapter 6 and chapter 7? And they bring him before the council in the entire book of Acts chapter 7 amen Peter stands excuse me Stephen stands up amen and gives his defense uh, before that court uh, and he begins to preach them an old fashioned sermon a good old holy ghost holiness uh, God sent sermon uh, and he comes down right down through the history of Israel and he comes right on down to the crucifixion of Christ and he says uh, your father's Amen, amen. They hated God. Amen. And you're just like your father. You're stiff necked. You're uncircumcised. Amen. We don't really understand, but about that of a blood is about as low as you could get to call a Jew an uncircumcised. Amen. I mean, Peter, he had a little bonus. Amen. Stephen had a little bonus. I keep wanting to call him Peter. He's Stephen now if I do switch on you, okay? Amen. But he's Stephen. And he's, he's just preaching. He, you know, that's pretty tough. I, I've been to a lot of I've been preaching about 22 years, and I've never got bold enough to look at somebody and point my finger and say, you know what, you're a no-count good-for-nothing just like your daddy. Any of you other preachers have been that bold yet? Not me. No, 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 not me. But Stephen, you uncircum, you stiff neck, call them names. Can you believe that? Well, he'd been the talk of the town when he's a preacher who done that. I'm you stiff neck, you uncircumcised. Amen. I mean, you, 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 your fathers did resist, and so do ye. And I, and my question was, did God, amen, stand by this man? Because the Bible said when he got right there, amen, and he, he began to just tell him like it was, and he come down to give his altar call, amen, they wasn't nobody saying, come as you are, or amazing grace. All of a sudden, those men crashed their ears. Amen. They ran on him and began to gnash on him with their teeth. And But I asked the question, did God stand by this man that was full of faith? Help me, Holy Ghost. Did God, the God of heaven and earth, did he stand by this man full of faith? i tell you what happened. The Bible said as they began to gnash on him with their teeth. I mean, I've had folks get upset with with me, but I've never had nobody gnash on me. Huh? I mean, I've had men this, this close just yelling at me, spitting in my face, you know, just, just yelling at me. Amen. And uh, I've had my life threatened when I pastored Hazard. Amen. And, and all kinds of stuff. I've, I've, I've had a few little things, but I've never had nobody just start biting on me. Huh? Thank God. Amen. Uh, amen. But Stephen, he's standing in there. They began to bite on him and they drag him outside. Amen. And they began to stone him and burn him. Amen. But I, I asked the question, did God honor this man? Amen. I, I'll tell you what the Bible says. The Bible said, but he being full. 
Notice he refers back to that. But he being full of the Holy Ghost looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God attended this man's funeral. God came, amen, to this man's side. And while they were standing there gnawing on him and men and setting and throwing rocks and setting them on fire, he looks up and he sees God there. Amen. The glory of God, rather. And he sees the glory of Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Did God honor this man full of faith? God honored this man. Woo! Now, I remember when I read this, Brother Jim. I remember bowing my head on my desk. I remember clasping my hands over my face and I started crying. And I said, God, I can't come up with that. I, I can't say I've got a heart full of faith. Y'all with me? Y'all understand where I'm going here? I said, God, I, I, I gotta be honest and humble. I, I don't feel like I've got a heart full of faith. I, I, I can't say that. And so I said, God, is there, is there a little, anybody else in the Bible a little lower? <laughs> Seriously. I said, God, is there anybody else in the Bible with a little lower, just a little bit lower? And so he took me over to the book of Matthew. Amen. Where that satyrian come to Christ. You remember that? And he had the servant at the point of death. You remember that? And he comes to Christ and, and he, and he explains the situation to Christ and says, all right, I'll just come to your house. And the satyrian said, oh, no, 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 no. You just, I, I got servants and I, I, they do this and you just speak the word only. Amen. And my servant shall be healed. Amen. And Jesus, I can just sort of see him. He said, I've not seen such great, great. Everybody say great. I've not seen such great faith, great, great measurement. Huh? I've not seen such great faith. No, not in his, where are you at tonight? And, and so I, I, I looked at that man. I said, okay, God, did you, did, what did you do for this man that had great faith? What did you do for this man? And so I read where the Bible said, uh, amen, that all of a sudden as they're standing there, uh, amen, somebody comes running, amen, in the self same hour, the servant was made whole. He was healed. Did God honor this man that had a heart, amen, of great faith? His servant was healed. But I remember sitting there at my desk and I was crying and I said, Lord, I can't come up with that. Now I'm talking in three years of, of my wife being sick and my church just, my, just, I took a very, very severely hurt church. They'd been without a pastor for three years. Nobody would touch him. I lost friends for going there. Seriously. I lost preacher friends for going there. And man, the stress was on and I couldn't go to any place in the community without, if I went to pay a bill, they said, now what church is that? Uh, so and so. Oh, is that where that preacher did that? Yes, ma'am. You had to go through all that, you know. And so I had all that on me. And my wife was sick. And, and, and I was trying to reach for heaven. And, and I said, Lord, I, I, I got to be honest. I, I don't know if I can come up with great faith. I'd be, I have to just be honest. And I remember I was crying and, and I was saying, Lord, I, I don't know if I can, I just have to be honest. And so I said, Lord, is there anybody in the Bible with a little less? Give me somebody else, Lord. And, and I, this is very, I'm very honest with this. And I literally, I prayed, God, is there anybody? And, and I thought of a time in Matthew 14 where the disciples were on a ship and the disciples were crossing uh, 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 the, the Sea of Galilee and there came a storm up. You remember that? Amen. And the disciples became fearful and Jesus came walking on the water. Amen. And they see him and they fear for their lives. And all of a sudden Christ speaks up and says, Be of good cheer. It is I. Then there's all of a sudden one man 
Peter that raises his voice. You remember what he says? Lord, if it be thou, bid me to, to come unto thee. Amen. And all of a sudden, the Son of God says, come. Jesus, amen, as he says, come. The Bible specifically, amen, just says that he said the word, come. They all twelve heard the same word, come. Amen. He didn't say, come, Peter. I looked in all the Gospels, but he just said, come. But it was Peter who stepped out of the boat in the midst of the storm and began to walk on the water toward Christ. Amen. But oh, he began began to look the other way and to the left and to the right and he saw that the wind was contrary and bolsterous and he began to seek and he cried out Lord save me and the Bible says amen that Jesus stretched forth his hand Amen. When you look that up in the Greek, amen, it means that Peter was so close. Jesus didn't run over to him. Amen. He just stretched forth his hand. He was right there at the feet of Jesus Christ. Amen. But the winds and the, amen, waves began to, amen, cause, amen, doubt to enter into his heart. But Jesus stretched forth, amen, his hand and caught. Some of you might be here in that situation. You're you're in the house of God. You're in the presence of the Lord like tonight. But you feel like you're still sinking. You feel like you're, but there, thank God for Jesus. Amen. He did not, amen, belittle him. He reached forth, took him by the hand. They walked back to the ship. And he looks at Peter and says, Oh, Peter, thou of little faith. Wherefore did thou doubt, Peter? Oh, thou of what? Little Little faith. Mm. Well, the question is, did, did God honor Peter's little faith? He walked on the water. Little faith, able to walk on the water. Wow. I mean, if Peter had a little faith, what did all those other men on the boat, what kind of faith did they have? If he had a little faith. Now, I've never walked on the water. Now, if I walked on the water, it would probably take more than a little faith. Being my size, you know. But I remember, I said, Lord, you ever, you ever just hear them voices from hell so much when you're in the trial, when you're in the battle, when the pressure is on? And I said, Lord, I don't even have little faith. Because see, after about three years of that, one night she had a seizure. About three years into it. And uh, about 3.30 in the morning, something of that nature. And, and the kids come running. And I told them, I said, it's all right. I'll, I'll hand it tonight. I had my Bible open. This Bible I'm preaching from, Isaiah 53, verse 5. Now I read the scripture. My wife was just laying her shaking. And uh, we had tried medicine. Don't get hurt at me, but if you don't. But we, she tried medicine to no avail through those three years. And, and so I, my faith had got so low, Brother brother Jim, that I, 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 I remember the devil that night. It was a rough night. I remember... He, he just, he just, just seen a weak point and he began to jab and I felt my faith literally just sink out of me. And I remember praying and, and telling the Lord, I said, Lord, I can't even be saved. I, I've done everything I know to do. I've prayed. I've fasted. I've read your word. Lord, there must be something in my life. I said, I'm just going to resign the church. I said, I, I can't take this anymore. It's just, 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 uh, uh, Lord, I just, it's just, uh, we can't leave her long. I mean, she's battling herself. I'm trying to be strong. And I said, Lord, I just, I, I said, I'm just going to resign the church and I'm just going to get a job and, 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 and I just can't take it. I, I don't even know. And, and, uh, I remember 
I uh, I got so low that night, Amen. That uh, I, I said, I'm, I'm, I said, God, and this was about a thirty minute, thirty minute, minute period. I said, Lord, talking about little faith now. I said, Lord, I can't even come up with that. And I said, Lord, I ain't even saved. I, 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 I'm not even, I'm going to resign the church. I, I, I don't know what's wrong with me. I mean, I was just battling. Maybe you've never been there, but I mean, I was into it. We were under the gun, brother Tony. I, I had so much pressure on me. Amen. And, and just loss of friends and, and, and just, just carrying on. And anyways, I, I, I remember though the, the Spirit of the Lord come to me and just a little bit and I, I come to myself and I said, no, wait a second. This is the devil talking to you. This is this is the enemy talking to you. You know you're saved. You can't go by feelings. You're letting your emotions play tricks on you. Anybody with me? Amen. You're letting your emotions play trick on you. I, I remember I, I was in my t-shirt and it was three thirty in the morning. I remember grabbing myself by the nap of the neck and say, "Straighten up, preacher. You're, you're, you're in this mind battle. You got to recognize you're in. I'm all alone. There's my wife. You, you're in a mind battle. Straighten up. You're, you know you're saved." You know, you know, this is the devil. He's lying. Your emotions are, are playing with you. And I, 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 and I come to myself and I said, Lord, if I'm saved, let somebody call me right now. Let, if I'm really saved, if you know where, if you know my name, if you know where I'm at, let somebody call me right now. It's 3.30 in the morning. And the phone didn't ring. And I said to myself, I said, You're, you, can't, you can't do that. you got to walk by faith. And so I went off to sleep. But about 7 o'clock the next morning, my phone rang. And it was from Sister Donna, a lady in our church, very godly lady, praying lady, fasting lady, a poor couple. Man, they just know God, just got that relationship with the Lord in tune with heaven. She said, hey, Brother Simpson, how you doing this morning? I said, well, Sister Donna, we're doing all right. How you doing? Well, I'm doing fine. But she said, I, she said I'm calling about you and Bev. My wife's name is Beverly. I'm calling about you and Bev. And she said, uh, she said because last night at 3.30, she said, the Lord woke me up. And, uh, and I got under such a burden for you and Bev. And, and she said, I felt like calling you. But she said, I didn't feel, amen, that it was appropriate for a lady to call that late. Amen. And she told the Lord, I, I, I'll call him the first thing the next morning. Amen. Can I tell you, amen, I didn't tell her what I'd prayed. I didn't tell her what I'd ask. Amen. I said, thank you, Sister Donna. That's, uh, that helped me. I, I got up the phone and I began to cry. I began to weep. I said, Lord, you do love me. You do know my name. You do know where I'm at. You, you do, God, you do care. I am saved. I'm not going to resign the church. Amen. You are with me. Did, was my wife healed right that present moment? No. Amen. But I knew God had heard at my cry. Cry after three years. Amen. But I remember saying, Amen, like this scripture, and I said, God, I don't know about, Amen, if I can even say I've got a little faith like Peter had. Amen. You say, preacher, if you didn't have full faith and great faith and little faith, you just about preached us out. But wait a second. There's one more verse in the Bible. Amen. Because the Lord spoke to me and said, son, Amen, It's there's a place in the Bible that even goes littler than Peter's little faith. You'll find it in St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 17, where Jesus Himself, help me preach Holy Ghost, Jesus Himself said, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Amen, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible. Lift your hands all over the house here for a moment. I know it's Saturday night and you're probably not supposed to have a good Holy Ghost altar call. Amen. But I feel like the Lord uh, dealt with my heart. Amen. I thought, God, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, 
And I've heard ministers, and it's fine if you've done this, try to dissect the grain of mustard seed and just the minuteness of it and the smallness, and that's fine. That's, there's some good preaching right there. But I don't believe that Christ was just trying to get to a specific size of faith. But what he did to his disciples, listen to me real close, is he said, if you have faith as this, and he showed them, and he pointed their attention to the smallest thing their eye could behold. But he didn't stop there. Because then all of a sudden he draw their attention to the largest and the biggest thing their eye could behold, the mountain. And he said, if you have this, if you have faith, what measure of faith? Come on here. What measure of faith? You don't got to call being hen. Huh? It ain't in a preacher somewhere. You can wake up in the middle of the night, three o'clock in the morning. If you have faith as a grain, you know what he was saying? He pointed them to that mountain. He said, some of you are facing mountains. Amen. Some of you got mountains in your life and you've looked at them and said, how in the world am I ever going to get over this? How in the world are we ever going to get through this? What are we going to do now, honey? What are we going to, we're facing this mountain. I've never faced a mountain like this. But is this in red? Can we believe what Jesus said? I said, can we believe what Jesus said? I didn't say it, but Jesus said, if you have faith as a grain, I mean, how many saved here tonight? Raise your hand. You can't raise your hand without having faith. How many's justified? How many's sanctified? How many's got the Spirit of God living within you? Every time you raise a hand, it's a witness. You got faith. But can I tell you, the devil, he will attack you during your sickness. He will attack your mind during your trial and say you don't have enough faith. Has anybody ever heard that? But can I tell you, you have got to ignore the voices that are contrary to faith. Oh, there was a sister who come to an elder pastor one time. And she said, Pastor, she said, I've got this problem. And she said, it is so hard and so difficult to believe for. Help me, Lord. She said, it's so hard to, to believe for this problem, Pastor. And this elder pastor, he stood there a moment, and he just stood there. And again, tears were streaming out on this young lady. And she said, Pastor, did you hear me? She said, what can I do? It's so hard to believe for my problem. It's so hard to, to believe. It's just hard to believe. Pastor, this elder pastor all of a sudden spoke up and said, Sister, to believe whom? And she said, huh? She said, Pastor, I said it's hard to believe for my problem. And he said, Sister, you're not supposed to believe for your problem. You're to believe God. And let God take care of the problem. What measure of faith does God move in? Come on. You've heard that same enemy tell you, you don't have that full of faith. You don't have that great faith. You don't have that little faith. Amen. And he'll try to doubt, get you to doubt right out of your miracle, right out of that God meeting your need. But I'm telling you what the Bible said. The Bible said, if you have faith as a grain. Can I tell you, I got a good report now. Amen. My wife had seizures about three years after that. That lady called me that morning. Amen. And God come by and touched her. I don't even remember the service. All of a sudden, though, I don't even know how it happened. There's nobody gets the glory. Brother Jim, she stopped having no seizures. Amen. And she's not had one since. Amen. For been about seven, eight years now. Amen. She's not had one seizure since. Amen. Are you with me tonight? 
God. Oh, I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you're going through. But can I tell you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, where you at tonight? I remember years ago, and I'm closing. If somebody wants to get a song. I remember God dealing with me to take a little church in Pineville, Kentucky, another church, a different different city in Kentucky, and a different church, different time than Hazard. It too had been a very troubled church. It too, when I got there, they had thirteen dollars in the bank, and and behind on the rent or excuse me, the mortgage, no insurance. The banker was calling two or three men that was left. There's about 15 people left, including children. I was starting revival. I was preaching for Joy High one weekend in Missouri, and my mom calls and and crying, and she said, have you heard the pastor's resigning and and the church is not doing good? And and, uh, that's my home area. I had no intention to ever go back there, not... Not anything wrong, but I just, I was evangelizing then and God was helping us. And I had a new Dodge truck, $40,000. I had a nice 40 foot camper, three slide outs, and we were doing good. God was helping us. And, and, uh, I was about eighty or $90,000 in debt. And God began to burden my heart. I started meeting on a Monday with Charles Barnett, talking about faith, talking about God. Amen. And God began to deal with my heart to go to that little church. And I said, God, if I, 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 I gotta have help. I, I, is this you? And I asked Brother Barnett, y'all know Brother Charles, don't you? Brother Barnett, I said, Brother Barnett, pray with me this week while I'm in revival. I told him the situation and it looked like an absolute, with natural eyes, it would be the dumbest move not because it was a small church, anything of that nature, because that's all I've ever pastored. Not that reason, but financially, it was a, the biggest leap of faith that I'd ever did. And God began to deal with me in a very poor area in Kentucky. When I got there, I, I, I felt the Spirit of the Lord deal with me. And I don't know why I'm even telling this. This ain't even in my notes. But I'll, I'll try to get hurried up. But I remember... Brother Tony Walker, we, we dealt with us and we went. When I pulled in there that, that night about midnight and, and into that parking lot and they had left me a key and hid me a key and we were supposed to start a little three day revival the next, that week and I was going to preach for them a couple of weeks and see what they thought of me and they knew me real good. And, uh, and I walked in there and played the grand piano and it was so out of tune. It was worse than a, if you played one at a Goodwill store. The heat pump, the heat pump had been not working for for uh, six weeks, and this was July. There was a roll and a half of toilet paper left. There was no Kleenexes. There was no paper towels. It was a mess. I had good preacher friends that I confident call me when they heard I was going and say, "Are you sure this this is you?" This is, this ain't right. I said, God dealt with me. How many believes in a big God? I couldn't look at it with my natural eyes. Because every time I looked at it with my natural eyes, I'd want to squinch and go someplace else and say, this thing. But the Spirit of the Lord began to deal with me. I pulled my truck in there and I got a hurry. I pulled a forty thousand dollar truck, pulled it up there, and put a for sale sign on it. I put a for sale sign on my camper. I put a for sale sign on two and a half acres of prime land I had in London, Kentucky, next to the Bond Church. I put everything we had. I, God being my witness, I bought a two hundred dollar car. We lived in Sunday school rooms. Amen. Can I tell you though? I stayed there two years before I come to Brother Steve Gentry's old church. Amen. God worked so many mighty miracles. When I took the little church, they voted to sin. And I, I, and I told them, I said, brothers, I don't want a dime. I don't want a handshake. I don't want a tithe. I don't want anything. Let's build up this treasure. I, I, 
And I didn't even tell you that I'd preached in Oklahoma a week and a half before that at a church. And one night, one service, a church, Brother Wayne Hookham's church there in Tulsa. Do you know Brother Wayne? Amen, Wayne. While I was preaching, just like I'm doing right now, Wayne jumps up and says, God just said you need a good offering. And I didn't even know about this church then. He took $3,000 that. And I remember getting in the truck when we left. I said, honey, God don't give you a $3,000 bonus. There's something going to happen. Come on, God don't give you a $3,000 bonus to go blow it. I said, we're going to put this in the bank. And then I went for Barnett the next week. And Barnett gave us like just on a real amount for just a small church. And we had a little, just so when we went, I had a little nest egg. And my story, the little story is this. I'm, t- I'm trying to paint a picture of just how big God is. I mean, the church had... uh the church had been there five years and no vinyl sign. They'd had the vinyl sign in the, in, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the bottom and, and it just an eyesore to the community. I mean, there were just a lot of things against it. Amen. And, and, and they, anyway, so, I mean, we took it and we started living in the Sunday school rooms and, and, and God blessed. And next thing you know, a preacher from Virginia called said, Hey, I heard you can use some vinyl, a vinyl side man. He, I'll come down and help you. And I said, Brother Nathan, I said, if you come here, I cannot help you. Do you understand? I'm not telling you that to be kind. I'm telling you, we, we, you, if you come, it's like coming to Mexico here. Amen. If you're going to, he said, I'll come down and I'll help you put it on. Do you have some guy? I said, man, they will love to. He come down. I said, I'll give you $200 for gas and that's it. I'll feed you fried taters and chicken and pork chops while you're here. We'll feed you good and, and give you enough gas. And he came down and this is 30 days after I'm there. Are you with me? I hope I don't lose you. Amen. Is it all right if I testify a little bit? Amen. And and uh because uh, there's a few pastors here that probably need a miracle or two. And there's a few churches here that's probably struggling. Huh? Y'all might not be, but pastoring a few times, there's probably some church, but God's a good God. We'd been there a month, and he's down there putting a the vinyl sign known. We don't have the two hundred dollars in the church's account in a month's time to pay him. The night before, my wife said, what are you going to do? I said, we'll just get it out of our account and we'll pay him. And uh, so he's he's working. He's done. His wife's in the truck. His babies are in the truck. He's working on the last birdhouse of our church. We've worked hard for about a week and a half. Well, about a week. He worked 16 hours a day. And we worked hard and to put that up. And it's like a two-story church. And anyways, and and, 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 and he's fixing to pull down that ladder flop it on his truck and leave back to Virginia and I'm fixing to give him a check out about that time within 10 minutes he'd have been gone amen an older man pulls in an S10 truck and he says hey are you the new pastor I said yes sir he said man this looks great man that's been an eyesore to this community I go down to those little church of God of prophecy he said but do y'all take donations and I I want to say man we take food stamps right now we 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 are we it don't matter we take food stamps just come on with it bring us some sack of taters and some beans Soup beans, pinto beans, you know, soup beans. But he just, any, I didn't say that, but that's what I wanted to say. Amen. And he said, I, I go home and I come right back. Now, we don't have insurance on the church. The bankers calling me. We got to get insurance. This ain't right. You got a loan. You gotta. I said, man, I, I can't. We'll do it as soon as we get it. This man pulls back up and he's, by that time, Brother Nathan's pulled his ladder down. We're just chit-chatting. And he, this guy walks back, pulls back up in the S10. And I'm just going to be honest. I'm thinking $25, $50, $100. And, and, you know, usually a preacher, they'll take a check and stick it. But I didn't that time. I was desperate. He handed me that check. I just opened it right there up in front of him and everybody. And it was for $2,000. Whew. I started crying. I said, sir... Thank you. I'm talking about God. Devil beat me down when I went there. You're the biggest fool. You pastors have probably never heard that, have you? You're the biggest fool. And I say, that you know, this is what the devil is. You're the biggest fool for taking this church. You're going to ruin your name. You're going to have to file bankruptcy. You got this $650 truck payment. You got this land. And, amen. But this God, it's the first miracle comes along. $2,000 miracle. I give Nathan $400 instead of two. I said, look here, Nathan. God just blessed us. And the man, he said, don't ever tell my name. I never seen him before or since. 
I can't remember his name. I never told my wife. I said, if he's going to give me $2,000, say not to say his name. I didn't tell his name. Amen. Because he might want to come back and I want to be able to say, I ain't told nobody, son. Just give me two more thousand. But he didn't. But God met the need. Amen. And so uh, we Nathan pulled out and he pulled out. I went straight to the bank cashing as fast as I could. Amen. And, uh, and went straight to the insurance. Same days within an hour, paid the, the insurance and took the paperwork and went to the bank and the banker just come in there and he just, you know, huh? I, just mighty, mighty, mighty miracles. All of a sudden we went from 15 to 20 to 25 to 30 to 35 to 40 to 45 to 50. And in a year's time, we were 70 people strong. Uh, ties that went from 40 and 50, 60 dollars to several hundred dollars a week. Uh, amen. We paid the piano off. We paid several different little debts that they had other. When I got there, we paid everything. Are you with me? God miraculously helped us. Amen. I sold truck. I sold trailer. I sold land. We drove a $200 car. And I'm just going to, I don't want to embarrass my wife. But after that, we'd go to a meeting somewhere it's like Broxton or and we didn't come here with a car. But we'd go to Richlands or somewhere to a meeting. And my wife said, please don't park up front. She's got a little pride in her. If y'all forgive her. Praise God. She said, please don't park up front. Please don't park up front. Park back here behind a tree somewhere or something. You know? Amen. We was there. And let me tell you, i got to hurry. Can I help a preacher here? I'm a preacher's friend. We was there for about a year living in Sunday school rooms. Amen. We, we drove that car for about a year and a half. Amen. All of a sudden, I, I, I'm at a camp meeting, at a fellowship meeting. I got to hurry. I'm sorry. Amen. I get telling the goodness of God. Talking about God now. Amen. And, uh, I, 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 and a preacher comes up from Texas and he said, and, he, and he's crying and he says, Brother Simpson, God spoke to him. I'm driving a $200 car. I sold my truck that I had for a couple of years. I, I, I am a man, you know. I can't tell you that that wasn't hard. It was hard. To go from a $40,000 four-wheel drive dually truck with a Bose-type sounds. I mean, it was rough. But I never complained. I mean, I had one of them cars that you had to hit the dash to get the radio play. The air conditioner leaked in the floor. But I drove that thing to Texas two or three times, preached meetings and revivals. It never quit on me. Hey, Amen. Anyways, this preacher saying, I feel like God spoke to me and said, buy you a new vehicle. About that time, Frank Rogers, y'all know Frank Rogers from Missouri. He come by and got the man's attention. I said, brother, I, in my mind, I think, Frank, hush, get away, Frank. He's fixing to buy me a car. Just, you're bothering, you're interfering right here, brother Frank. I know brother Frank real good, but I didn't say anything. He went around and got his attention and I walked off. About 10 minutes went by, brother so and so from Texas came back in. He said, and he cried. He said, I'm serious. And it was so devastating because I never had nothing like that. I'm a poor person from Kentucky. I've never, I don't have a rich daddy or a rich mom or no in-laws. We've never had nobody to support us. Never. We've always just God's people and just living by faith, you know. He said, he said, I want to buy you. He said, I want to buy you a vehicle with maybe a thousand or two thousand mile to save a little bit. He said, write it. He said, you go find it. And I'll mail you a check. The white van you see out that door right there, 2005, which this was 2006, had 5,000 mile on it. I went and found it. Boy, can this get bigger? I went where I got my Dodge. They had the same type of vehicle, four cylinder, because I was trying to be cheap on the guy. I didn't try to go buy no Cadillac. And so I just went, I was going to get about a 10 or $12,000. And I went to where I, and they wanted 14 8 for this. I walked straight across the road here to a Chevrolet dealer. And there's a guy there that I know, sort of charismatic. And I tell him what's going on. He starts crying. He says, I believe God sent you my way. He said, I'm going to bless you. He said, this car, this van right here is 14 nine. He said, let me see what I can do. He walked in the dealership, walked back out. He said, I can give you that van for 10 two. I just got a 14 seven across the road with, with, with more miles than this one. I called that preacher from Texas that I found this van. He said, man, it's an awesome deal. I'll overnight you the money. He overnighted me the money the very next day. I took it. He paid for the taxes. Amen. And I went and bought that van and paid cash. Hey, preacher friend, God loves you. God knows where you're at. Huh? 
You've been fight. You got to have a. You got to ignore them voices that's contrary to faith, huh? Hallelujah. Amen. That was in October and December. A man from Georgia, y'all state, called me. Said, hey, preacher, I heard you're driving an old truck. I want to buy you a new vehicle. I said, you're about three months too late. He said, man, I ain't going to let nobody steal my blessing. Amen. He said, I'm going to do something for you. I just sold my business for $2 million. Amen. He calls me back in about three days. He said, I heard you was living in Sunday school rooms. What does a good used mobile home cost? Mobile home? You mean a real mobile home? We're living in sunny school rooms. My teenage daughter, Ho, I mean, I mean, she's living in a teenage Sunday school class on a couch. Amen. Turns it into a bed. And when it's Sunday school, we pull all that stuff out there, put a table. You mean a, a mobile, you mean a real mobile home? He said, I'm going to buy you one, find you one. So I did. I called him. He says, I'm going to overnight you the money. He overnighted me the money. And I went and bought that. 14 by 73 bedroom from people I knew. They was an acre and a half of land right down the road. They wanted 15,000 for it. I bid it 3,500. I didn't have 3,500, but I figured up the payment. I said, if I got my van, no payment and my trailer, no payment, I can afford a little bit of just a tiny bit at that time. And I said, the lady laughed when I bid at 3500 on. She said, sir, there is no way that I'm wasting my time. I said, ma'am, I'm praying. Would you please? She said, okay, but I'm telling you, it won't happen. Do not get your hopes up, preacher. She called me back the very next day. And she said, preacher, I don't know what you've done. But she said, uh, they said we've had that for sale for two years for fifteen five or 15000 She said, they said, let you have it for 3000 or 3200 something like that. And I bought that piece of property. Property, put that tray, moved out of those Sunday schools. Can you believe that? We was living high on the hog. I mean, loud high. Hey, Amen. That was, that was 20 some thousand dollars. God had bled just in about a three month period. Uh, amen. I come to Alabama. Hey, amen. Before I was there just for a, a month, somebody come up and said, here's almost six thousand hey, dollars. Amen. To dig a well on your property. Hey, I'm telling you, there is a good God that a God that likes to bless his people. 